Okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right, music down. We're all set. How's it going, man? Haven't talked in a while. Let me turn you up a bit. You're a little bit... I got my settings down a bit. Let's try it now. Better? Yeah, you're all good now. Good. Just got done working here. All right. I'm glad I can finally get a co-caster in going right now. So this is the Tita Dota 2 Italian Tournament. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Some of these names are kind of uh, iffy for myself. But we're going to see Oceani in pajamas, which I'm told means mm -hmm. very bad players in pajamas. Yeah, versus Thunder. Well, yeah, the one, one team very standard, other team very odd name. So, <laughs> see if we can go with that at all. I, I feel like the teams with the odd names are usually either really, really good or really, really horrible. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, very polarizing. Yeah. So very standard bands right now, Undying, obviously. Axe not so standard, although I do think Axe is a strong hero. I think he's a sleeper in many cases. Yeah, I think a lot of time people overlook him just because of the uh, nerfs he's taken, but he, he kind of still fills the same roles as a lot of other initiating uh, early game heroes, I think. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, heroes that get banned out already. Like it's, especially, I see a lot of people picking the uh, offlight Magnus um, recently. I feel like Axe is definitely a stronger pick than offlight Magnus in pretty much every situation because he does similar things. Um, he does need the blink dagger a lot more than Magnus does, but really, it does. It's a hero that performs a lot of the same functions with a very, very much easier time in the offlane. Slow draft. This is this is honestly odd. Usually, the first two bands come out pretty fast, but you know, up to the radiant. They want to take their time. They want to make sure they're picking exactly what they need. This is, I believe, uh, round three right now. We're going in, so. Loser still has another chance. There is a lower bracket, so. It's not too bad. Yeah, I think uh, this patch, the first four bands have been pretty much standard, although these bands are quite odd. Mm -hmm. um, I think that these are all strong heroes, though. So I, there's a lot of there's a lot of killers in this game, and Lashrak is the other one that I would more think was going to get banned, but if they wanted to pick it up, then I understand. Mm -hmm. I think that they're going to try and counter with the gyro right now, but they might just completely avoid it. Who knows? Yeah, I mean it's odd. I th I feel like some teams feel like they uh, they almost have to do the whole like we pick our supports first thing. But those those picks that you could pick up, you know, Lashrak like the Radiant picked, Gyrocopter, even Undying if it's not banned out. Some of the stronger picks like that Shadow Fiend, even Earthshaker's all right too. But they completely scale over the Gyrocopter, and if Radiant pick up the Gyrocopter, I mean, yeah, that, their uh, team fight's gonna be. Yeah, I think there's a couple heroes that are like that where uh, they're definitely like instant picks. I think Lashrak is one of them. Undying is definitely one of them, although I don't think I've seen him get through a draft in months. Um, no. The hero is just way too good. He has way too many options. He can play off lane solo. He can be pretty much the best tri lane killer in the whole game, uh, whether he's with other heroes or not. So mm -hmm. I think that is definitely one hero that needs to get banned every single game because it's just way too strong in the game. But I think the other thing is that they might just be trying to dodge some of the, those heroes and try and pick them up, which is also another viable drafting option where you just ban out some of the, you know, like hard counters to the heroes you want to pick up. Um, Axe, is, Axe is really good against Dazzle. If they really want to pick up Dazzle and uh, do a strat like that, then maybe they, you know, they just want to say, all right, well, we'll leave the other heroes open and we'll pick up Dazzle and ban Axe. Gyrocopter being banned out, you know, easy ban. We talked about him. He's pretty strong right now. What do you think about the Luna? Uh, Luna plus Venge is insanely good. It's kind of like uh, early game draw Venge. Uh, doesn't need as much startup time and definitely the synergize with those tracks, so I really like that ban. The band's mm -hmm. really smart. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Do you think it's worth yeah. it for the Dire to go something like a Life Stealer for the last track, or do you think it's just better just to get a BKB carry? I think it's usually better to get a BKB carry. Lushrak still really needs, like, as long as you can avoid kind of the level 6 7 kind of strong Lushrak, he still needs a lot of time mid game to build up items. And if you just dodge him and don't let him get a super amount of farm, it takes him a really long time to get to uh, a really strong, like, one man wrecking crew when you're playing that hero. Because when you need to get Octarine Core, you usually need to get BKB. Um, a lot of those items are expensive, and they don't give you a lot of stats, so he's very easy to gank in the meantime. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's very standard bands to Quap. It's very strong this match. Mm -hmm. 
or Shaker and Nice Band. Uh, I don't know. Do you think the Leshrac is going to be a core? Do you think they're going for the vengeful Leshrac setup in stun? I think really. I mean, personally, I don't think that Leshrac is a particularly good support hero. Mm -hmm. um, he's okay. I guess if they, you know, felt the need to pick up a different core, if they saw something that, you know, oh, this strat will work great, I'll just move the Shrek to support. He does okay, but I think personally, I, I feel he does better as a core hero. With items, he's just so strong. Like I said, it takes a long time to get there, but he is uh, the definition of what man army is. As soon as he picks up enough items, you just run into the fight. As long as you don't die for the first 15 seconds, you win. That's mm -hmm. pretty much it. And you can hit your lightnings. You don't even need to honestly be good, because you can just throw down lightnings and run after people. <laughs> Ancient Apparition, interesting. So they're going really squishy supports. Hopefully the Dire don't pick up anything pretty... I mean, like, Nuke Heavy. Shadow Fiend. Um, even, even something... I've seen, actually, these Western teams value Silencer a lot, which I'm surprised almost all the games that I've seen so far of Silencer has either been banned out or picked up. Yeah, I think, I think the Ancient Apparition is always good against Dazzle. Um, just in general because of how good the anti-heal is. Mm. Um, especially with Dazzle, because a lot of teams will pick up Dazzle and then another healer uh, to run kind of like a double heal support lineup just to synergize well with the uh, the Shallow Grave, because you can just double heal out of the Shallow Grave and then usually someone will live after that. But obviously with the Ancient Apparition, you just block that completely. So I think it's a good pickup. Um, it does leave them very, very squishy on supports, though, especially during the early game. And they don't have a... They have a decent way to go on someone if the Ancient Apparition invests into his first spell, the Cold Feet, but it's not usually the most efficient way to do things if you're investing heavily in that skill. Was Venge... No, she, there's no way, no. She doesn't even give above two seconds to guarantee the Cold Feet. Right. No, I mean, it's pretty It's pretty hard to do. You have to use the Cold Feet first and hope they kind of stand there for a half second and then stun them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a difficult setup. It's definitely not a guaranteed kind of easy, we're going to get this double stun off. I think with the Lesh, that would actually be okay, though. I think if they're going to do that, if they're going to run the uh, core one, like the one position Lesh with those two heroes, it's actually oh, yeah. pretty good. Okay, yeah. Especially with three range, with the um, the buff that Ancient, Ap Ancient Apparition can deal out. Early game, that triple stun, maybe a level two uh, going on the off laner. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that it comes back to this. This actually, this direct comes back to your point about how they shouldn't always pick up your uh, two support heroes early because that is an extremely susceptible tri lane to a lot of AoE damage. But the problem is now they have a line and a dazzle, and if you go into an aggressive tri lane with a line and a dazzle, you're just going to lose. Yeah. Because dazzle's okay, and an aggressive tri lane does really well. He has obviously the power to save your sports, but line is very squishy. His. Uh, his hex has a really long cooldown, and he uses a lot of mana when you're not mana draining stuff, and when you're not pulling, and you know, we don't not getting those levels. And if you get down on line early, it's extremely hard to come back. So, uh, they really don't have an option to go with the uh, with the aggressive tri lane here because they picked their swords up so early. Yep. TAP and picked up mid. I really don't. Besides uh, the Leshrac damage from the refractions, well, later on when they're trying to team fight, and I don't think. They are going to put Leshrac mid unless now they're going to because of the TA pick. It's still pretty difficult to take a refraction charges off of the Shrek, honestly. Um, you have to use the... I mean, unless you catch her by yourself and you're trying to like run her down behind a creep wave, it's pretty random whether or not you're actually going to take them off. And uh, Edict does a fair amount of ticks, but it actually does less than some of the other spells that are even targeted, like a Viper or something like that, where it's like super easy. I mean, if I was them, I would just pick Viper right now. I have no idea why they picked the TA right now. Um, I think Viper synergizes really well with the Radiant team. Um, he's a really strong frontliner that can deal out damage... At, uh, slowed on the Phantom Lancer as well. Uh, they already have ways to clear the illusions with Lashrak damage, and I don't think that's really going to be an issue. So, I think they honestly hmm. should have picked up Viper, and I think he should get banned here by the Dire yeah. because he's a pretty good picker. I don't. I, I mean, like I get the Tide Hunter. He's obviously always just a good pick because of his ultimate, but he's really not in favor lately, and it's not like he he doesn't super hard counter anything. No, I think he's good against, uh, he's okay against PL, I guess. Um, he just has a really long time in between uh, the initiations that he can make, and that's why you, people don't pick him up as much. You don't have as much of a passive game anymore as you have seen the last couple patches. Mm -hmm. So when you have heroes like Tidehunter, like his Ravage is extremely strong. He's very good in lane. He's very survivable in lane, which is great for games like that where you're going to leave him by himself for five or six minutes. But the way people move around the map now, it's very difficult to kind of just let him sit there and leech experience forever and then only initiate once every two minutes. I mean, obviously later on, if he gets a refresher, it's a little bit better. But um, especially against someone like a TA who's more than likely, especially against this team, going to pick up a BK 
KB very early. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty difficult to kind of get in and do that. And he'll, like I said, he'll survive in lane and be fine. They, they will be able to zone him quite a bit, but you can always ancient stack and stuff and go in jungle. So it's just a hero that is a very safe pick. He's very easy. Um, doesn't really get shut down completely a lot. Really doesn't really need anything to initiate or anything because the ravage distance is so wide and they have so many stuns already. So. The only problem I see for the tide is if the Phantom Lancer gets a fast Diffusal Blade, he's going to have mana problems unless he gets a couple good ultimates off. Yeah, definitely. And I think the 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 PL while it has its issues with uh, the getting the illusions clear this game, it is actually really good against those heroes. A lot of these heroes have mana issues. Lishrak early on has mana issues. Um, Tidehunter obviously has mana issues, and the same for Petrol Spear and Ancient Apparition. Really, until you get like a uh, Aghanim Scepter and level 11, 12 on Ancient Apparition, he's very limited on his mana. Hmm. I don't know how much I like that Sven. I mean, it's obviously good for clearing illusions and. The uh, extra stun is going to be good because now you have three total plus the tight ult. But I'm not really a fan of it at all. He has a really hard time locking down Phantom Lancer. He has a really hard time with all the disabled and the Center War Runner uh, counter initiation as well as the uh, breakaway speed and the Templar Assassin just going invisible right in his face. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of factors, and I mean, it, you know, it's easy to say, oh, well, they'll just get detection to go gank the Templar Assassin, or they'll have it in every fight. But that's just another thing you got to do to not have that and like i said he's gonna have a really hard time getting kited around this game also if they go late i feel like the phantom lancer and ta are gonna out carry the radiance so hard i think yeah definitely um once they both get bkbs uh this game is pretty difficult as long as they play it well uh the phantom lancer should pick up a bkb eventually um it's a little bit situational on the hero just because you obviously don't get the magic immunity on your illusions, which is not so great. But you kind of uh, point you yourself out, like, "Hey, I'm over here." Yeah, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit iffy sometimes. But I think in this game, he definitely needs it. Mm -hmm. There's just so much magic damage, and if he can't get locked down by any of the stuns here, he won't have an issue with the Sven. So they have a lot of stuff to deal with his illusions, but not really a lot to kind of kill him. They kind of need to get on him, and they need their supports to find him quickly, and then be able to effect effectively gank him. It looks like they're going to Lesh Mid, so we'll see how that matchup works out. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it could work just fine, so let's we'll see. Alright, well, we do want to introduce the team, so over on Thunder, on the Dire, going to see Kill, or Killer, uh, with some Chinese, I apologize, or Japanese characters, Asgard on the Lion, Nevermore on the TA, Shade on the Dazzle, and I Hate Giraffes? Is that, is that? Oh, Geography. I hate geography on the Centaur War Runner. Uh, another radio. We got them smoking up into the jungle, actually, where they will not find anyone. Uh, we got Shadow Fey on the Sven, uh, Ox Yux on the uh, Vengeful Spirit, Thebe on the Ancient Apparition, Green Ghost on the Tide Hunter. Very fitting name. I like that. And fuck this game on Lashrak. So nice. If the Dire, the, jungle, the Dire actually, they just popped uh, Sven. No, nope, they popped right. the entire smoke. They were very aware that the level one of the Radiant team was very good because mm -hmm. they would have gotten smashed had they actually found those heroes. <laughs> 100. So that was very good by them to not even go into their jungle. They have no reason to. They're going to lose this rune. Um, doesn't matter as much as feeding way of first blood to any of those heroes. So honestly, if Cent Centaur needs to go grab this rune, it's completely free for him. Yeah, he's gone. He'll get there eventually. He has plenty of time to like come out mid. It. He is all day to just run down here and grab this real quick. But that's really important that they don't die level one because this tri lane that uh, the dire has is not super good at killing people. It's okay at surviving, and the line is obviously good at preventing aggression on the PL as well as the Dazzle just healing them up. But they're not very good at killing people early on. They don't have a lot of damage. Um, the PL scales really well with levels, even with auto attack damage. But uh, early on, he doesn't really have a lot of options. Mm -hmm. Now, something I've seen a lot, and um, at least in this tournament. It comes down to how well the safe lanes go at controlling the lane because uh, I think it was two games ago that I casted one off laner got level three before two and a half minutes while on the other side of the map the off laner could barely get a hundred experience and I feel like that's a huge part in why they won that game and stuff like this where this tides almost level two centaur he's a level two and a half so far and they're just kind of letting these offlaners do as they please, get all of this experience. 
Yeah, I think in this patch it's okay as long as you trade even. And if you're, and I think it's really important in this patch more than others. If your offlaner gets behind more so than the other team's offlaner, you have a lot of issues with team fighting because you don't have as many options, you don't have as many heroes with spells and with damage. So I, I think it's okay as long as they trade even if both of these heroes get damage or get at levels and get far. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the Dire will still be better off just because Centaur has more uptime than Tide, which is, again, the reason why people don't pick Tide as much. He has, you know, uh, 60 seconds or whatever it is, 90 seconds in between his ult at level 1, and uh, he can just use the Blink Dagger so much more effectively even without his ultimate. The... correct me if I'm wrong, but the Dire don't even have any vision out right now. They don't. They try to counter the sword up in the easy lane, but they didn't get either of them, which did they get? Did they get dewarded though, like their observers? I don't know, did they even buy them? No. Alright then. I don't think, it, it tells me in the shop, doesn't it? I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah they no. didn't buy them, or two they in bought stock. one or something, I don't know. They're still two in stock, so. Yeah. <laughs> I guess they just didn't want them, I don't even see any, ra I think the Radiant must have, oh no, they have one, okay, you just can't see it on the minimap, they have one down here. For the centaur, but yeah. Oh, because it's on top of the other one? Okay. Yeah, yeah I, thought, I was going to say, I thought I saw him place one, but no. Yeah, so they have one ward down there. It, does, it is a pretty good ward. Uh, he used a uh, sentry to block out the easy camp, which was good, because he was able to oh, then wow. put down another ward for uh, vision. So they only had one. The only problem with this is they only had one ward up top for the uh, whole camp, and they unfortunately were unable to find this ward, which I think if the lion searched a little harder, he'd be able to get it, but instead he's getting some more sentries. Mm -hmm. This centaur is going to be level 6 before 5 minutes if he keeps it up. Yeah, I don't think he's missed an actual point of experience yet. They have a really hard time keeping him out just because uh, Vengeful Spirit cannot trade hits with him. His shield just lose. Mm -hmm. And the h apparition is even worse because he has no armor. So it's pretty difficult for them to keep him boxed out. And Sven doesn't really do anything at level you know 2. He's going to be able to stun and stuff. But uh, without the actual full combo of them using all three of their stuns together, they're not going to kill him. And he's fighting underneath this tower right now. So... Lion, I think, might be trying to make something happen here. He didn't get anything usable off the carrier besides sentry wards. Let's see, let's see how mid lane going, because I am very interested in this matchup. Looks like the Shrek is just destroying this TA at farm, but I think that's just because lightning is a good spell. So the TA should be able to pick it up later. She's going to get more oh, damage. going to see a initiation down in the centaur, and after three stuns, there's nothing he can do. Yeah, that's what he needs to watch out for. I don't know why he was just kind of wandering around the jungle. I mean, like I said, they can't kill him unless they use all three stuns on him, but if they get all three stuns on him, he is very dead, because mm -hmm. Centaur does not have an extremely... He actually has seven armor with the ring protection, but he doesn't have very good survivability early on after his stun. He doesn't really have much to offer, so they can definitely kill him as long as they uh, actually go on him and commit to the kill. That kind of put Tide even for the Centaur. Centaur was pretty far ahead of Tide at first, but after that kill, that evened things out a bit. I think the, really the critical point in this game is going to be when these two offlaners get their Blink Daggers. Not even when they get six, because the, the Centaur might be able to create a kill off of his uh, off of his ult. The Tide might be able to stop some sort of initiation if they do it, but really... There might be initiation right now on Tide if they can get an Earth Spike. An Earth Spike, a heal actually misses, and I don't think they'd be able to kill him, no. They just don't do no damage. Peel, not great at killing Tide when he has three levels in Crack Control. He barely does enough damage to pierce through that, so. So that's gonna kinda, <laughs> once again, swing the favor into Centaur as far as experience goes. He's about 120 experience, now 80 experience out from his ult, so maybe like 3, 4 creeps-ish. Yeah, like I said, the TA, the TA caught up middle when she got level 5 too. It's pretty pretty critical on TA to get kind of level 4 or 5 where you get start getting a lot more damage than the hero that you're up against, especially when it's Lash and he has you know lightning to just kind of take every creep go. Lash is going to slow down because he's going to lose out on all of his mana. If they can camp the next rune and make sure that he, only, he doesn't get one, then he's going to be in a really tough spot because he is terrible at lasting when he doesn't have his... Uh, is lightning, especially against someone like TA. She hits for 130 damage when she starts fraction. So. Mm -hmm. I guess kind of a wash mid lane. I don't think that they should really be able to trade kills unless something really weird happens or one of them overcommits to something. Uh, but they should both down bot gonna see a stun followed up at cold feet and a stun from the venge armor reduction. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to get out a stun. The cold feet proc actually happened in the middle of the animation. 
Yeah, he has to make sure. He can see these support heroes, too. He has to make sure that one of the support heroes isn't there, because if one of them isn't there, they don't get that kill. But uh, he should be able to see from the sword that he has bottom that one of them is gone or both of them are there, so he should just be staying out when both of them are around. I think they're trying to go top now. Mm -hmm. I, I still don't see them killing him. An earth spike with a little bit of a heal, and that's all they have besides the slow. Yeah, I mean, the main problem is the Tide just, he, he has 36 <laughs> damage reduction already, and then he uses his, uh, his Anchor Smash, and then the PL actually doesn't do any damage to him. He just doesn't do anything, because he has so much damage reduction that um, the PL can't hit him, and that's the real problem early on with them zoning this Tide out, is that they can't actually kill him. They don't have enough damage. There's a smoke going rotation, gonna go mid, and if these two heroes can land their stun specifically... Nope. I don't think they're gonna commit to it. She's gonna throw out the stun for no point. They didn't even have vision, though, so if she would have melded, they would have been just fine. I don't actually think they could have killed her. They have no, no Enoch down the Um They would have been able to stun her, and he might have been able to, they might have been able to get down her refraction charges with auto attacks and the cold feet, but I don't think they actually would have been able to kill her. No, maybe they got in her head a little bit. Maybe she'll play a little bit safer, but... I think, really, they should have just gotten... Just try and kill the centaur again. I don't think they have any other play. Even killing the TA mid, the heroes farm so fast that it's just not really an even trade for them. Uh, if she's going to come back, she's going to do fine. The centaur is probably the one who has the hardest time coming back and getting farm like that. Maybe you can go to the jungle and do that kind of stuff. But they're already smashing top lane. This tide is getting way more than the centaur now because he's just standing up in the face of this PL and there's nothing he can do about it. Yeah. I think they might try again, but they are they don't seem like they're trying to commit to this tide. They've tried twice and they're just losing hope. They might need to rotate. Yeah, I don't think they can actually kill him. I think they the the dire team should definitely rotate on mid and they can kill the Shrek. And, mm -hmm. uh, he's a much easier kill than the TA is, obviously, with the refraction charges and with her having 800 life. I mean, she's pretty difficult to kill, but the Lush, 600, 600 life and 5 armor, they could definitely kill him if they got on him and the TA was nearby. The TA might actually be able to kill him right here by herself. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, she backed off. I don't... I think she might have been able to... Get at least a good chunk on him. Nobody was near him. I think she should have been able to at least bait out some of his bottle charges. I don't know why she. I mean, I guess she doesn't really see the support heroes though mm -hmm. anymore because uh, they, the ward went out bottom, so the only one they have is up top, looking at the uh, the dire jungle. So she doesn't really see a lot of it. She can see top, but she can't see anyone coming in from the bottom. So she's trying to play it safe, I think, and just make sure that she gets the farm since. Uh, she knows that the pain train isn't coming from the tide hunter, and the Lashrak is still getting farmed. So. I think this Ancient Apparition might just be stacking at this point for this Sven. Which is, I mean, it's good. They want to propel. Especially, I feel like Sven's going to shine in the mid game, whereas PL might take a little bit time to cook up a bit. Yeah, I think that's definitely their, uh, definitely their uh, time to go, is really when, once the Sven gets uh, his Mask of Madness, I think that's one power spike that they have. Uh, that they can he has his Mask. He that's might want to get an Ogre Club and then start ganking. Yeah, I think that that's a big power spike for them. The Lashrak is, what level is he? He's like level 7 or 8. He's 8. Um, once he gets level 9, he'll take one level in his ult, I assume. And then it'll be really easy for them to just get some kills. This Tide is... This Tide is a freaking tank. Yeah, it, I mean, the one thing you want to have against Tide in a lane uh, is a lot of magic damage. It makes life really hard for him. But when you have these heroes that do decent setups, and, you know, Lion obviously uh, has great disables, but uh, the PL doesn't do any damage to him. Usually, to a, to a normal offlane hero, PL would be a monster, and he'd be able to just peck him down with all the illusions and, you know, the constant spam of this first ball. But the first ball doesn't really do that much damage. It's the fact that the illusion will hit him afterwards that does a lot of it. So, mm -hmm. the Tide literally doesn't take any damage from that. He just anchor smashes, and he's good to go. Is it going to be a smoke up top? I don't... I mean, they, they might be able to get a decent pickup. The Tide does have his ultimate, actually, so... If he can catch two or three, yeah, I think if they only have one level of grave. Knock be able to grave off the lion, and they don't even waste anything. This Dazzle should be dead as well. Mm -hmm. That's a good rotation. They just brought everyone, and like I said, they they didn't even bring the sweat for that, which was even better because that means he can continue farming. But uh, he they just brought you know the heroes that are really good right now. The Shrek is really strong right now. Uh, Ty still has his ultimate, they, he didn't even use it, so he still has that threat, and I don't think that they can actually kill the Tide right now, unless they commit pretty much everything. Down bot, they're gonna try to get this Sven. Centaur has a invis rune, he's just sitting right on top of it. If he can get a stun, the Hex, Earth Spike, they should be able to get this pretty easily, unless one of them eats a stun. 
That was actually a really good play um, from the three of them. They made like a nice little delta split right here to make sure that not all three of them got stunned. So mm -hmm. the centaur got stunned and then they got the kill. And a lot of uh, lower level or less experienced players wouldn't always think about stuff like that. So that's a good play. They did a good job of making sure they secured that kill for the rotations they made. I think maybe they might just be trading lanes here because they should have killed the centaur again before they started doing their rotations. They they had that that streak of kill after kill after kill, and I feel like they could have got a couple. But now that they're making the rotations again, if he has more than one person down here with his ultimate, he might be able to just survive. Yeah, I think that's a mistake that I see a lot of people, including like even better teams, make is that you know they. They see that the centaur has gotten ganked. Wait, wait, it's very risky. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, they they see that you know the centaur died twice, and they did a good job of zoning him out when he was dead. But the problem is they didn't actually zone him out when he was in the lane. So he still picked up plenty of experience. He was already level four, or almost five, when they actually killed him. So it's not like he gets that far behind. Dying once in an off later is not really expected, but it's acceptable. I mean, you can. Uh, you can definitely come back from it, and it's not a huge deal. So even if he dies twice, if he's level 6, he can still create stuff off the back of that. So I think they definitely should have committed to killing him even more. Um, when it's just, free kills, free money for the supports, it's free levels for their supports. Oh yeah, just well. just pick on him over and over and over again. Especially, I, I actually haven't seen a lot of teams do it, but if you know when the cannon, cannon timings are, you can do a single pull and it'll push into the wave, which you don't usually want, but if you're going to dive the centaur, it works numbers and i don't think the supports up top would be able to teleport down if they did something like a lion only being level four would just die yeah and that's where they're running into problems right now is that uh they're putting a lot of aggression on this top lane and the pl is just kind of sitting back the centaur's running away. Mm -hmm. um the pl is sitting pretty far back right now he doesn't have the space that he needs to farm he's almost got diffusal blade but it's just a dry diffusal blade with the ring of aquila so he's still gonna have a hard time staying alive at the title and sitting um, the Tide has free rain up here still. They I mean, they can go on him right now, they're not going to kill him. It doesn't matter. He has his ult. They, they so might. He doesn't have mana. Oh, That's now good. he does. He has the wand. Okay. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's pretty pretty difficult kill for them. Because Sen traded bottom two to the Sven. Oh, um, Centaur's... Centaur might be mad just a bit. Yeah, they just keep putting pressure on this top lane. And even if it's not successful, even if this Lushrak doesn't get any kills right here, the show of power just makes the PL sit so far back. They're still afraid of Ravage. Oh, no, he used Ravage. I didn't see that. Must use it on the tower. Um, so they're going to rotate the TA, though. That might be enough to swing it if they actually stay up. If the Radiant stays up in the lane, it doesn't look like they are. Let's see. So Tide, Tide doesn't really have that decent of a mana pool. Hopefully he's going to be able to get that ma the mana boots soon, but... If I they think can... it was right call, actually, to go for just the blink here. Well, he was, he was very know. far ahead. Yeah, he got the blink so fast that I think it's worth it just to go for the blink dagger. Um, it helps him survive. Uh, he can just do a lot more for him than getting the early mana boots when he's not really just sitting there spamming Aegir's mana. He's going to die now. Ooh. That, that heal nuke... From the dazzles, so strong. It's pretty good with the PL. I think that's a uh, an underlooked component of that trial. I guess that doesn't really come on line till earlier, but it is really good mm -hmm. um, if they can actually land it. And it's the one thing that's going to do a decent amount of damage to the tide hunter, honestly, because the line nukes are not going to do that much. The PL nuke doesn't do that much, and the auto attacks obviously do nothing because it's tied hunter. So he does have that defusal up pretty early before 15 minutes. And they tried to smoke underneath the tower. That was a little bit of an awkward smoke. If Radiant were paying attention, they easily could have saw that. Yeah. I think the Radiant Vision was really good. Now they're really in the back foot when it comes to it. Although both teams don't have great vision. Uh, the Dire wasted this word up top. Not really wasted, I guess. But they utilized this word up top uh, to see an incoming Lushrak gank. But now it's not really providing them with a lot. Mm-hmm. We'll take a look at net worth right now. Sven leading the charge, followed by PL and TA, and Leshrak right behind. So actually, both the teams pretty even right now. No, no one's out of order. All the supports, the off lanes, they're all right next to each other. I think it's very even given. They have very similar um, 
game strategies, it feels like they have, you know, their core hero. I think that the big difference is that the Radiant core hero comes online a lot faster than uh, the Dyers, although they don't carry as well. I mean, the Sven's going to have issues unless he's super far ahead of the PL late game dealing with him. Uh, just from the slows and the kiting and everything, plus with the TA on him, it's going to be very difficult unless he picks up a couple items very quickly. So. You think it's worth the Sven going for the Mjolnir? It's not usually seen on him, but just for the illusions? I don't think so. I, I think they have plenty of ways to clear the illusions, honestly. They have um, AA Blast, which will pretty much clear all about all of them if he actually hits them. And I mean, then usually when you're going to see the most illusions is when he's actually fighting uh, with the new PL. He has less of the split pushy kind of stuff, so I don't think that you really need anything other than your team fight spells to clear the illusions. Dyer actually might lose a tower right here to Edict. They do not have a fort. They're gonna gotta try to go for the deny. What a play, Centaur, but if they're able to land the lightning, Centaur's gonna pop his ult, and actually the PL, two of them are gonna eat the AA blast, as well as the title. I think they could do a little bit more here. Sven running in. That was really good foresight from the AA. He could have just tried to throw an, uh, an ult on the Centaur who's running away, but he knew he had his ult, I assume, and he knew that there's probably more heroes around there because the Centaur's not just going to go for a one-man, I'm going to run into a tower and try and deny. So he throws it into the woods over here by the tower to see what he can pick up, and he picks up two heroes who then can't go in. The PL and the TA just backed up immediately. So mm -hmm. Easy tower, easy two kills. Unfortunately, they lost a core for uh, Centaur and offlane and uh, support, but they might actually get two towers out of this. <clears throat> I don't think they're going to still push. No, they got to back off. Well, that's good damage, though, and next time they push that tower, if they are able to get you know a kill or two, it's an easy tower kill now. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely not to be understated. It's a very important tower, too, especially when you're on ready inside to get the T2 mid. Uh, it leaves the Dire team with not very many good options to get into their jungle. Um, and it leaves them very susceptible to ganks there. Centaur almost has the Blink Dagger coming out. Probably about 45 or uh, 450 gold out on it. PL finally picking up the Power Treads. He wanted to go for that Diffusal first. Luckily, he hasn't been doing too bad. Uh, he's been kind of unchecked. Yeah, he didn't really get punished in that lane. He got, boxed, he got zoned out a lot by uh, the Tidehunter, just by nature of being Tidehunter. But uh, he definitely just still did pick up enough farm to... Uh, keep in line with the other heroes. He still has a similar farm to the Sven, um, and definitely enough. Down bot though, they're actually going on top of the Sven. Sven could die here pretty easily. AA blast coming out. They're gonna eat all three of them. Are gonna eat that, but they can just kind of run in every direction besides the lion. Yeah, it's still getting boxed in here. by this tide. This dazzle is gonna go down as well. Nice last track stun. TA is gonna make it out probably with this TP. Unfortunately, Ven didn't get the vi Venge didn't get the vision. Yeah, I think it's honestly still a worthwhile gank though, just because the radiant is so reliant on this Ven um, to get really far ahead of the PL, and he really isn't doing that so far. He has you know the mask madness. He's got his basic items, but he still doesn't have BKB. He's close to it, but the PL is gonna continue to fire the PL. I think farm is much faster than the Sven, only because he can farm in more dangerous positions than the Sven can, because he has more options of getting out. Yeah. Um, he far, probably farms a little bit slower, but the option just to kind of go down here, like even at this, where he's going to go down to this tier 1 tower and probably push it all the way in, because he knows that he can get out if he needs to. He can just, you know, uh, use the doppelganger to dodge the, any of the projectile stuns that the Radiant team has, or to get out of cold feet. Um, they don't have a lot of options for instantly locking him down, aside from Tide Ravage, which that even that isn't guaranteed, so... I like the Radiant play right now. They're going pretty aggressive because they know that they have to conquer this mid game. And they know Lion's such an easy kill. The Centaur ult, although it was trying to save the Lion, it's kind of wasted here. Yeah, I, I think that they make a good trade by having the uh, Pioca bottom tower, but still the Lion is just so far behind. Now he's nowhere even remotely close to a Blink Dagger. Uh, they got the Medallion on Dazzle, which is good because that means they'll be able to pick up an early Roche as the Dire Squad. Uh, much easier, so I think that's a good trade that they have the Lion uh, a little bit further behind, but with the extra deaths, it's making him very, very far behind. So, yes, Sven, Sven's about 500-ish out on his uh, BKB. Once they get that BKB, if they can get a good Ravage, maybe get a Tier 2, and I want to say break, at least try to break Rex. If they can use the Ravage plus BKB to break Rex, they might be able to at least secure one leg in this game. 
But if Sven dies a couple more times, this PL's gonna outshine him pretty soon. Yeah, I don't know if they can actually push up high ground. They might be able to take this tier two, I think. Um, Dyer doesn't have a lot of. Uh, they don't have a lot of damage, but they do have a lot of defensive capabilities. Oh, so this lion once again, just kind of out of position here. He's oh. gonna get graved. Centaur on top actually takes out the tide before he can ultimate. Sven going in on top of this actually gets swapped out. That was an odd swap, but they still got the centaur. Yeah, but there's PL pushing bottom lane, not caring about this. They trade decently well. Um, the centaur dies, but they kill the tide, which means that they're not gonna be able to go high ground. I don't think they. I mean, they might, but it might have been able to go with the ravage, but without the ravage, they have absolutely no chance of going high ground. Nope. PL's gonna, gonna see a double TP bottom. down bot. PL, that has to be it, Sven. What a bad TP. It was very optimistic, yeah. I think. I don't know if he didn't think the Sven had enough mana or something. I still think I can think of. I thought he was just going to wait. Because I, I, I saw the turnaround and I was like, okay, he's just going to wait to dapple the, the Sven's stun. Which yeah. been the play. That would have been totally fine. And then he could just TP out because he had full life. There's no way the guy's going to kill him in three hits. So uh, I would have I would have liked him. to send, seen him try to dapple over the trees and then just TP out from there. Yeah, but... that, I mean, that would have been fine too, but... I don't know if TPing out right in front of him was the best option. So. <laughs> well, honestly, I don't think that favored any team too highly because they didn't waste the Ravage. They did get the kill on the Tide, but... I think I favored the Radiant pretty highly. They didn't get the tier 2 bottom for Dire. PL died. Uh, Tide died, but he also oh, took okay. down two people with him, so I think that they definitely made out like bandits on that one when they really shouldn't have. If the PL would have lived, it would have been very even, but yeah. you guys were... I, I actually didn't see the PL didn't get that. That's how they TP'd in. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they TP'd into that, and they, he didn't take that tower. So it's a pretty rough trade for them that he doesn't get that and he dies. If he had got one or the other, he would have lived, or if he would have got the tower, it would have been okay. But they get pretty much nothing out of that. It's going to be a rough fight for them to fight into. Really mm -hmm. bad. Tide does still have that Ravage, but Sven has almost no mana, so it's kind of like, do I BKB or Mask of Madness? Tide's going to jump in on everybody, going to get hexed up. Ravage into an AA ultimate, hitting 5, I believe. BKB on the TA, he, she's going to be able to fight a little bit, but she doesn't really do that much damage yet. I mean, she's going for this BKB first, which is And great. she's just going to get eaten up by the AOA. I don't know if BKB first was the right play for her this game. No, I... Because she's going to avoid it, but she's going to avoid the damage and the disables, but she has no damage now. I, I, I get it. I mean, you want to survive so you can do damage, but that's it. You're just walking survivability. Yeah, well, I think the main problem with that, too, is that in this case, she's the only one with the BKB, which means that, hey, the other heroes are going to get locked out, and once they're all locked out, once all five of these heroes are on her, it doesn't matter if she has a BKB or not, because the Sven's just going to run up on her and hit her. She doesn't block that much of their damage with the BKB. She basically just blocks the disables, so... She still has issues with surviving uh, whether or not they have the... Tide getting a little bit greedy trying to protect his team. They're able to get the rush, but Tide gives his life. And actually, Dyer might be able to fight this a bit. Nope, Unfortunately not. not. Now when they get double stunned. Yes, now the Lushrak is very strong. Mm -hmm. He has 16 Bloodstone charges and 3,000 gold. Now you're in trouble. That's a very tough break for the dire squad because now this game just got so much harder because the 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 track had decent farm early on and he did enough to uh maybe make a comeback and you know do a lot See of going with the bkb she may be able to pick off this aa but after the bkb dies she's gonna die to this venge i feel like no nope, venge is gonna run off she just wasted a bkb charge to get a kill on an ancient apparition that is like level 11 or something mm -hmm. that doesn't matter it's a waste of a nine second pkb charge that you could have used to fight and i think that's just frustration with how that fight went um they could have done something a lot better but then both of their support heroes got stunned next to each other and both got killed before dazzle used any of his spells so uh that's not really what you want your support heroes to be doing especially someone like dazzle you want to basically be sitting back and trying to assist your cores so. yeah after that fight the radiant are just about 8k ahead right now and a lot of that is on Lashrac. Yeah, they're in pretty big danger with those. What did he now. just buy? Yeah, it was okay, but he's about BKB, I think. Yep. BKB on the career. I think that's definitely the right choice this game. Avoids the mana steal, avoids all lions disabled, so it's the TA, uh, the 
armor reduction if you use it after he gets hit, which is kind of important in this game because of how low armor that hero is. Um, but he definitely needs to be in this game, and he has a lot of uh, versatility to go with the amount of mana region he gets out of the bloodstone. I really hope this TA is not saving up for a blink dagger. I, I think that's not what she needs at all. She has the initiation from Centaur. Yeah, I think that either fast deso would have been more my speed this game or something just like a yasha into drums or something like that where she's just able to fight very evenly she has a different power spike now because when she dies her bkb down uh she does basically nothing she doesn't really do anything with the bkb bees up either is the problem though because she doesn't do any damage so if she would have gone for something more early game centric like that she would have at least been able to have kind of more u more usefulness right now than she does so I hope she's not going to blink either because she's still going to do no damage and the blink's not even going to help them get any kills. She has no one to pick off anymore. Mm -hmm. Yasha finally on the Phantom Lancer, so he's going to get a little bit more damage, a little bit more illusions coming out just with the attack speed that it gives him. But do you, do you think he just goes S and Y out of this instead of Manta because he doesn't have the time? Or do you think he needs to go Manta for those late game because that's where he shines? I think he needs to go Manta style because they're going to lose if he goes up S and Y anyway. If he goes S and Y, then they're basically admitting that they just want to lose mid game because even if he has an S and Y, he's not going to be able to fight a Lishrak and a Sven mid game. Yeah. All that stuff I was saying about how Sven needs to get an item ahead and he needs to get more farm than the PL. That's happening now. He's got a BKB. He's got a crit now. Oh um, wow! I didn't even see the crystals list. come out. Yeah, he's going to close in on a data list. And the other problem is that this Lishrak now has a ton of farm and a lot of usability and the effectiveness of the uh, of the. Fusel Blade is a uh, lesson now that he has a BKB and he has so much mana regenerate. So mm -hmm. It's pretty difficult for them to fight into this now. And, you know, the Radiant team's doing the right thing. Tidal came back up, now they're back in. Going straight off the uphill. They have nothing to fear from this team right now. No. The only person who can feasibly get in is the TA, and she can't even do anything to him when she does, so. Radiant can focus down these racks. If they can just get a melee and then try to fight, it'd be nice, but. They're gonna lose a lot of armor from this weave, even if, even if they are kind of beefy right now. Just yeah, they should get out now. Uh, this is very risky by them. Uh, if they get on this line early, maybe it's mm -hmm. okay. But... Oh, it's I don't know. The That's not yeah, so good. Yeah, they can't go in now, and they're just no, gonna get racks and then try to fight. Centaur's on top of everybody. He wasn't actually able to get his nuke off, and they're just no. gonna BKB and turn around right now. TA has her BKB up, but she's not even able to take out the tide. I don't know why she was focusing the tide, but. Um, the only problem they had that fight is the TA getting clipped by the AL was unfortunate, but they should have been able to mitigate that. But the PL used his doppelganger and then jumped into his fence son and got killed instantly oh. by a double crit. So, I mean, that's just, you know, he can't always expect that, but he definitely should have been playing a little bit more reserved early on. I think he could have been able to harass him right now. But when you're yeah. playing PL, you kind of don't want to commit all in, especially on a team like this where they have the options to kill your to kill your illusions. It doesn't matter if you build a bunch of illusions early on because they're just going to cleave them out. I think that it's a very uh, difficult game from Dyer now if they can even come back at all. Uh, it's pretty easy for the Radiant to push high ground at this point because of how far ahead they are. They have a good team for going high ground as long as they are in advantage. I don't see it. I don't see it at all. I think this is the game. I mean, as long as the Radiant don't have a major meltdown, I think that that's definitely a game over. I mean, they can make some mistakes and maybe lose a t fight or two uphill, but at this point, I think Dyer would have to win at least at least two fights uphill into their base to win, and hey, just picked up Aghanim Scepters makes it even more difficult, so. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty pretty tall order if they are to come back in it at all. They need a lot, and they need a lot to come back on. The PL was farming very even with the Sven, but they gave up a bunch of kills, and now he is very, very far behind. So. It's pretty unfortunate. This Lion was very out of position a bunch of times. Yeah, that hurt him a lot, actually, because they need his disables in the fight, because they don't, um, they have good initiation with the Centaur, but after the Centaur goes in, then they don't have a lot of team fight control from their cores. I mean, obviously, Phantom Lancer has a slow, but that's pretty much it. He has a slow from the Diffusal Blade, and then the TA has nothing. She has her traps. So they need the control in the team fights to make sure the PL and TA get on their targets and actually start to uh, do some of their damage. But at this point, they just have no damage is the problem. They just don't do anything. And a lot of these heroes don't even care anymore. Sun uses his Warcry. He doesn't take damage from anyone. Um, gives him 20 armor. He already has 9 on top of that. So it's pretty difficult for them to actually burst him down, especially through a BKB. 
So Dyer looks like they're probably going to make a one last ditch effort. PL's going to go in on this Vengeful Spear. I don't know if he's going to get anything out of it besides a Sven right in his face. He's able to dodge the stun pretty well. But other than that, if he just, he did use Warcry, he's eaten actually a lot of damage. But Leshrac's going to come and clean up besides Centaur jumping in on top of the AA. AA was kind of far up there. That's very odd. And down go the Dyer team. It's time for Leshrac to step up and just do a whole heap load of damage just running around. Yeah, he doesn't need to do anything special at this point. When, when you need to do something special on the Shrek is when you're down on farm or when it's early on in the game and you need to make sure you hit your stuns and use your spells effectively, but at this point, he's so far ahead that he just needs to walk in with his ult on and use his Edict and Lightning and then run around trying to hit some stuns. It doesn't actually matter. Mm -hmm. He can clean out everyone because only one person has a BKB. He's so strong already. He's already level 17, has level 3 ult, and 220 damage to a hero like Lion, who has 700 life is just irreversible. You can't do anything about it. and You don't want the Dazzle to be concentrating on saving a lion. He wants to even concentrate on saving himself because he's getting so wrecked by all this magic damage. Yeah, and there's GG. That was a good game. I think that the the Dyer just made a lot of mistakes at the very critical time for the Radiant team to get ahead. Alright, guys. Well, that was uh, first game of the day. The next game is going to be, I believe, at... 4.30 Eastern Standard, so in about an hour, probably. Um, much thanks to you, my buddy Walrus, over here co-casting with me. Hopefully we can get him in on some more games, but I have been Trips. Um, stick around, follow the channel, and I'll see you guys in about an hour. Thanks a lot.